dash tilla package. Inside the folder are one, two, three, four, five, six documents. Affidavit of facts template, exhibit B of mortgage affidavit, notary verification of service, RESPA, RESPA tilla qualified written request, final template, revocation of power of attorney template, and then the specific instructions for the RESPA package. So <clears throat> I'm going to open up the specific instructions. And um, again, it starts off and it, it basically tells you to go to the county recorder and make sure of the, <clears throat> the formatting requirements before you, you do the documents. Sometimes they'll hand you a piece of paper or sometimes they'll just tell you or call them, whatever. Prepare the affidavit of facts, keeping in mind the formatting requirements for the document. Do not sign print up sets. Now, um, <clears throat> you should always keep, always make a set of originals for yourself. In other words, make two originals, one set for them or one set for them, and you copy from that one. And then you keep an original blue ink signature copy or a, a set for yourself. That way you can you can prove that you have an original, and then also you can also make copies from the original, which is a far better than a copy off of the copy. So um, <clears throat> then prepare the affidavit of revocation of power of attorney, keeping in mind the formatting requirements. Do not sign and print up two sets. Take the above documents to a notary and sign all sets in front of a notary, and the notary will sign and seal. This, this is step by step, everything you need to do. Now, one of the other requirements that I added to the documents that I received was, uh, it's called a notary verification of mailing. And what that does is it lists all the documents in one place. It lists the certified mail numbers to each party, and a notary signs that it, they witnessed all of the documents going into an envelope that were uh, that was correctly um, addressed with the proper certified mail number and all that. So, and then when you take it to the post office, now you have your second witness, and then you will also receive the green card back, which is a return address or a return receipt card proving that they at least got the package. Now, think about this. Attorneys over the years have figured out that they can cheat in every area that, that, that you can think of. They would even open up an envelope, take the documents out of an envelope, and say they never received the documents. But when you have a notary verify that the documents were put into an envelope and they sealed them, now what are they going to say? They have the documents. It's too late. So that's that's another another thing that we've learned over the years to keep people from getting in trouble with these with these sharks. Make sure you have proof on everything you do. So, anyways, it goes through here and it tells you how to. Basically, when to sign the documents, how to mail them, um, how many documents go into a package. Everything is pretty well done for you. All you have to do is fill in your, your, um, your own individual uh, information. Anyways, there's like, there's 14 steps on um, this first instruction set. But it goes through everything for you. It's a piece of cake, really. <clears throat> now, what you're doing with the Respatilla package is um, Tilla means a uh, Truth in Lending Act. It's a it's a it's something that Congress passed a long time ago, and they put it into law. And then Respa is another um, act that Congress created, and they put that into law. And there's specific things that the banks and these attorneys have to address when you send them 
this qualified written request for information. So that's what the RESPA does. And then what the revocation of power of attorney does, it it basically uh, revokes your power, your signatures, and your powers of attorney that you gave to them when you signed all these different documents. So <clears throat> it kind of resets the whole the whole deal, the whole closing, the whole escrow back to zero. So you start with a clean slate, and then from there, that's where you you go forward. You do the reconveyance and stuff like that. <clears throat> I'm going to get a drink of water. So, so that's step one. It's all inside the folder called step one. Um, then we go to step two, and that's a notice of default revocation of power of attorney. Now, remember, the power of attorney is sent with the RESPA. So the bank has the power of attorney revoking your signatures, and it has the RESPA. Now you wait. 20 days from the day they received the the package. Now you can you can wait for the green card to come back, but sometimes it does not. You can also go on the USPS website and track the certified mail number. And it'll tell you exactly uh when it was delivered. <clears throat> so you count 20 days from the day it was delivered. And then you issue this Notice the default revocation of power of attorney. And then you wait 60 days from the date they received that package, and you do a notice of default uh, respatilla, and that's step three. Now, inside each folder, remember there's specific instructions on how to prepare the documents and how to prepare the mailing information and when to sign what, when. It's, it's pretty detailed. If you find any um, errors in in the package, please let me know, and I can get them fixed and put them back up on the U of U. Oh, by the way, that's where these this whole package is at. It's at uh, <clears throat> University of Eucadia. Then you go to uh, the download tab, and then toward the bottom, there's a category called Law, and then there's a subcategory called Foreclosure Defense Package, and that's where that's at. And it downloads, I think it downloads in a zip, and then when you unzip it, um, it all it's all put back together for you in the proper format. I had to zip it because if I didn't, all the folders and files would be all mixed up and it'd be hard to put back together. <coughs> so <clears throat> on step three, we have notice of default, respatilla, and inside there, there's three documents. Affidavit of non-performance respatilla, notary verification of service of non-performance, and then specific instructions. <clears throat> so every time you mail a document, there will be inside every envelope a copy of the notary verification of service. Never give your originals away. Always keep an original set with you. Okay. So that's step three. Step four, oh, this is the fun part. This is the reconveyance. The reconveyance means you're taking it away from them and putting it into your name or a trust name if you have set up a trust. <clears throat> there's a um, there's a cease and desist fax cover sheet, cover letter that's in this one. A full reconveyance template, notary verification of service, and specific instructions for full reconveyance. Hmm. The reconveyance also gets um, every one of these documents are um, recorded at the county level in the county recorder's office, and that way there's a full set of records under the the either the title number or the parcel number or however your your county records uh, land documents. <clears throat> so that's step four. That's the fun part. You, sh you should have had that to begin with. 
And then uh, step five, if you're caught in a in a trustee sale, there's a, a thing called an invalid trustee sale folder. That's five. And then they, you give it a notice of invalid trustee sale. And this is after you've re done the reconveyance. These guys never give up. So just have it in your mind. They never give up. They might come back 10 years later. Well, just send them another one. But they never give up. So <clears throat> that's step five. And then step six is the non-abandonment and labor lien. And it tells you in there that you can fill this. this actually, what you're doing is you're placing a, a labor lien on your property. And <clears throat> what you're doing is you're um, adding up all of the hours that you've put into labor and repairs and and it actually could be worth more than what the home is worth. So the idea is to at least match the value of the property with the labor lien, if you can do it. So <clears throat> that kind of puts a place marker on your property. There's somebody that has a lien against it. So if the bank were to foreclose on your property, they'd have to buy the lien out. It's not very profitable for them to do that. So anyway, <clears throat> that's it on the foreclosure package. I know there's probably not a lot of specific uh, questions that can be asked, but um, Terry, can we open it up for um, questions now if you've seen any? Oh, here we go. Sure, hang on a second. Uh, a better way is ask the question. Oh, let's see. Who else um, asked? Oh, there we go. Hang on. You need me to get to that? Sure. I'm uh, reviewing. I've, I have two questions so far. On the chat? Yep. Okay. Do you want to get to those? Sure. That'll be good. This, and if I see uh, anything come in on the phone, I'll unmute you. Right. <clears throat> this is um, Truth Seeker 45. Question. What site can we find these documents that you are discussing? Well, they're at the university.ucadia.info. Oh, somebody put it in for me. And they're under the download tab, and then you just go down and find the law section, and then it's uh, right under the law section. Uh, all of the documents are there. And this is for everybody. These documents were not written <clears throat> in um, Ucadian format. So if your friend needs uh, help on a foreclosure, please download the documents and get it to him. They're for everybody. They're not just for us. Very, very good, Ron. Thank you. Wait a minute. I have another right. one. Um, this is a better way. Ask this one. If you have mailed respite packet without all documents included, would you suggest sending packets again? Well, <clears throat> I'm not sure what what documents were left out without all documents included well I would start over then because some of these documents are very important and you have to have it as a package you know especially the um, the revocation of power of attorney the the notary verification of mailing and stuff like that those are all all very important and maybe they weren't even recorded at the county, you know. Oh, here we go. Here's another well, one. Ron, real quick. Um, yeah. So, um, in this process, then, uh, I know a lot of times when folks do this, if they know someone that's a notary presenter, notary witness, so to speak, um, you can go at it from that yeah, with with a notary presenter, right? Have y'all done that part? Um, now remember, this, this we're 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 playing in their sandbox, and it would be advisable to use a a real notary. Um, yeah. and we're not doing a notary presentment; we're doing a notary verification of mailing. Okay. Right. All they're doing is witnessing that the documents were placed in an envelope 
and they're